What's up guys and welcome to another video. I hope everybody is good. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A. It's long overdue. I think the last one I did was a year ago. So I asked my Instagram audience last week if they had any juicy questions to ask me and boy did they deliver. I picked a couple of my favorites. So let's get started in no particular order. The first one, what advice would you give to me, age 20, seeking a similar lifestyle to you, travel and freedom? Well, first of all, I would say the freedom comes from having money. If you don't have any money, you are really quite restricted with what it is that you can do. So first of all, I would immediately start earning money, whatever way that might be, just start getting some money coming in. And I would also focus on developing some sort of a skill. Because right now, 20 years old, you probably don't have a huge amount to offer the world. So you have to start to gain some knowledge, some skills. So at one point later on down the line, you have value to offer the world. And if you want the freedom to travel wherever you want to go, a bit like me, well then, the way that you earn your money is probably gonna to have to be online, right? If you are relying on earning your money from being in one physical place, e.g. an office, then your ability to be able to travel, or at least for large chunks of the year, is gonna be quite limited. So earn money online and start earning and learning as soon as you can do. Next question. Whew. What do you think of Andrew Tate being banned from most media platforms? I think it's a joke. I think today's society is far too soft and I believe everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Nobody should be banned off social media. It's very unfair the way it happened to him because there was no real excuse as to why he was just completely erased everywhere at the same time. And I think he genuinely was actually doing quite a lot of good. You know, he was inspiring a lot of men to get up off their ass, to stop being lazy, to start working, to start going to the gym, stop being depressed, stop complaining and just become a higher value man. Obviously, I did a video with Andrew a couple of months ago. I get along with the guy. I think he's genuinely like a good person. He wants to help people. He's got my back, I've got his back. So when he got taken off social media, he made a video. It was on freetopg.com, which was basically his explanation video as to what was going on. And he said, bro, can you help me out because I need to get some exposure to this video. I was like, yeah, okay, sure, I'll help you. So I put a story up on my Instagram, a picture of me, Andrew and Tristan. We were at a restaurant. I put the text, Andrew Tate's final message, the link to the video, freetopg.com. Two hours later, Instagram removed it, right? Their reasoning behind it was, it goes against our community guidelines on violence or dangerous organizations, right? So obviously I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. But what was even worse, Instagram shadow banned me after that. So shadow banning is when you basically just can't be found. Your post won't be pushed out to the explore page. You basically kind of become invisible for a while. And the reason I know I was shadow banned because I was getting on average 400 to 500 followers per day. And then literally a couple of hours or the day after I put that story up, I started losing followers every single day. I think it's a very scary world where social media has so much control over what we are allowed to say and what we can't say. And it's annoying because there are a lot of things I want to talk about and have wanted to talk about in the past, which I don't talk about because I know I'm either going to get the videos removed or I'm not going to be able to monetize my YouTube videos or I might even get shadow banned or banned completely. So something needs to change because all of this censorship is just getting completely out of hand but that's my opinion. I've got a lot more to talk on the topic. I mean, Andrew's still speaking and hopefully we'll link up again for part two. I think he's coming to Dubai very shortly. So yeah, hopefully we'll be cooking up something good. Next question, who would I love to train with now? Uh, I have actually made my way through quite a lot of the fitness industry in terms of the people that I would like to collaborate with. There's obviously Seabum. He's without a doubt at the top of the list. I'd love to get a session with him, just meet him and hang out with him. Uh, Simeon Panda, that's been on the list for a while just because we're both from the UK. Hypertrophy coach as well, I don't know if you guys know of him, but I would love to do a full week of training with him where he basically coaches me through uh, a split. Uh, the reason why, because I think he's very technical and he's, I think I would just learn a lot from the sessions with him. And of course, Tom Platts. I would love for him to just push me through a leg workout. It would without a doubt be the most brutal thing, potentially more brutal than training with Dorian, but. I love his passion and his energy and it would just be great to get pushed by someone like that. What's one piece of constructive criticism you would give yourself? I think I'd actually give myself two constructive pieces of criticism. First one being stop getting so goddamn distracted. <laughs> it's so easy for me to just lose focus and get distracted by so many things here, particularly living in Dubai. 
having the financial freedom that I have, the geographical freedom that I have, uh, the offers from women, from friends, from just enjoying life a little bit too much. And I have been sidetracked many times before when really uh, there's been more than one occasion where I've just needed to stay put and focus on the task at hand. So I need to eliminate a lot of the distractions and that's just a matter of where I just need to be more disciplined. And it's improving. Another piece would be that I need to stop trying to be good at everything. You know, I, I'm like, oh yeah, I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. And it's very difficult to be the best at everything. You have to pick one thing or maybe two things which you're really going to excel at. Next one, advice on balancing work life and relationships, social life. I think this is very important because when you get to a point where everything is actually in, in balance, you get a lot of satisfaction from life and I think it does make you quite happy. Whenever in the past, like I've, I've canceled out a few of them. So there's been times where I've literally been too focused on work and I sacrificed my relationships and my social life. And yeah, you, you, your career progresses, but you end up becoming quite bored with life. And the same thing goes, I've been in a situation where I've been, you know, I've, I've fallen in love and I've been completely engrossed in the relationship side of things. And then my work suffers and my social life suffers. You know, I, I don't bother doing any work. I don't hang out with my mates anymore. I'm just completely obsessed with this one person that I've met. And then you end up just becoming, again, unhappy and unfulfilled. So my advice would be, first of all, you, you almost have to allocate time during the week of when you're going to be working, when you're going to be spending time with your friends and when you're going to make time for your partner or, or date, dating life. And then I think it's great if you can kind of combine a few of them. So say, for example, uh, with your work life, if you can have a social life which almost ties in with your work, that can help. So me, for example, with YouTubing or traveling or fitness, I find friends who are also into fitness. I find friends who are also into traveling, friends who are also YouTubers, right? That's helped massively with allowing me to, to progress with work, but at the same time have a healthy social life. And with relationships, being in a relationship with someone who shares similar values to you, someone like, for me, for example, I mean, I've been in a relationship with women who like to take care of themselves and like to go to the gym, okay? We have something in common which we can do together. Next one, are you still taking finasteride? Would you recommend it? You wouldn't believe how many people are asking me questions about my hair. If you don't know, I did have a hair transplant. This was in 2019 in March, and everyone's asking for an update video. I don't really know what more to talk about. The hair is still clinging on. I think ultimately you are, in a sense, fighting a losing battle because ultimately, at some point, you know, you, you're going to lose your hair. You can't hold on to it forever. But the way I saw it was, well, if I have the option of being able to have hair for at least another 10 years up till when I'm 40, then I'm going to take that. So I think the transplant was very successful. I believe what has helped me to retain a lot of my hair is taking finasteride. I have been taking finasteride daily ever since the procedure. I don't take a full pill of one milligram. I take half and it's almost every day, but there are a couple of days where I just forget. And I think it has made a difference. Has there been any negative side effects? Nothing drastic that I can think of. Everything in the bedroom is still operating smoothly. I think a lot of it is largely mental. You know, if you are completely convinced that taking something is going to make you floppy, then more than likely you're going to overthink about it and you're going to be floppy. So uh, that side of things I think is largely mental. But if you do have some underlying issues or maybe your hormone production is a little bit off or lower than average, then maybe taking finasteride may not be beneficial for you. I think there are some cases where there are some genuinely negative side effects, but I think it depends on the individual. But I think a lot of it is overhyped. Um, if you want to know more, I would go and watch the videos that Derek has done because he goes into it in a lot more depth than I would, would ever do. And he knows a lot more than me. He's a smart guy, so go and watch them. But yeah, I'm still taking it. Happy with the procedure. Would I do one again in the future? Potentially, if I felt like I needed to. And the surgeon did actually say when I saw him last time I was in London, he was like, well, you have enough hair left on the side and the back that you could do it again if you want to because I only had 1,700 grafts. Next question. How do you allow yourself to travel that much and in the same time work? 
do you have a team behind you? Well, I, kinda, I created this lifestyle for myself because I knew that I wanted the freedom and I knew that I wanted to travel. So I said, right, how can I earn money which is going to allow me to still do the things which I want to do? Which, what's, how is it going to allow me to be free? Because back in the day when I used to be a full-time personal trainer, I didn't have that freedom to travel because all my clients were in one place. Right? I had to be there to earn money. And I was like, I don't like this. I want to travel. I feel like I'm anchored to wherever I'm training my clients. So I changed up a couple of things, my revenue streams. I moved everything online because I knew that if I was generating money online, then that would give me the geographical freedom to go wherever it was that I wanted to go and still make money. And then I kind of transitioned my content a little bit. You know, instead of just doing purely fitness videos, I did lifestyle videos, I did travel videos. So obviously, whenever I go to travel somewhere, it is in a sense work because I'm still getting the content. I'm making YouTube videos. I'm taking pictures for the Instagram. I'm still able to sort of tie in the fitness side of things and the travel side of things. And even now with the clothing company, which I have, I'm doing a lot of campaigns and shoots in destinations all around the world. So whenever I go somewhere now, it's not just, oh yeah, I'm going to go somewhere and it's going to be a holiday. It's like, okay, there has to be a sort of business reason behind this. But what I would say is when I do travel, I'm nowhere near as productive. Like I'm just not in my good routine. So you know, my, my physique might suffer a little bit. The training might suffer a little bit, but my business in terms of growth is also going to suffer. You know, I can, I can travel easily and still keep things ticking along and still make my money, but it'll be a little bit more difficult for me to grow. If I want to go through periods of growing my business and taking things to the next level, then I really do have to just stay put and focus on the tasks that need to be done. So yeah, in that sense, I'm at a point now where I do want to take things to the next level. So I'm going to be eliminating the travel for quite a bit, at least until next summer. I don't really see myself spending too much time out and about unless it really is for some seriously genuinely beneficial business reasons. How do you tackle some of the challenges in your 30s, like low energy, metabolism, stiff muscles? I, I want to say I've seen a drastic change the moment I turned 30, but if I compare myself now to the physique I had when I was like 22, 23, you definitely do notice a couple of things which are different. When you're in your, your low 20s, you think you're invincible, you can do anything. So I think it's much more important now to warm up, to stretch on a regular basis, to just try and prevent injuries in the first place. So me doing one rep maxes is something which I will barely do anymore because the risk is much higher to injuring yourself. Metabolism, I would say it has slowed down, not drastically, but the way I tackle that is just by being more sensible with the way that I eat. I can't get away with having crazy binges and just eating crap, right? If, if I eat crap, I'm gonna suffer more. And if I eat a lot of food, it's just gonna take me longer to get that accumulated body fat off. Low energy, again, just gotta make sure that you're just getting on top of your sleep. I can't party like I used to party. I can't drink like I used to drink. The hangovers are brutal, so you just have to take care of your body more. Next question, what do you think are some of the biggest factors contributing to your success? I would say that I have a lot of self-belief. You know, I do believe that whatever it is that I do, I will be able to achieve it if I really want to do it, right? Whatever I've set my mind to and really wanted to get, most of the time I've got, and obviously it takes a hell of a lot of work, but I have to really want it. But I know that if I really want something, I will get it. And I do have this belief that everything's going to be okay. Like, no matter what happens in life, you know, the lows that I've gone through, the bad situations that I've been through, things not going my way, at the end of the day, everything is going to be fine. You know, it's not the end of the world. And I think just having that attitude gives you the confidence to pursue things which are a little bit scary and risky. You know, there's definitely a few things which I've tried, they haven't worked out, but I just say to myself, look, if it doesn't work out, it's fine. Like, everything's gonna be okay. Take the loss, learn from the mistakes, and move on. So it's very important, I think, to have self-belief in yourself, knowing that whatever it is that you wanna do, you can achieve it if you want it badly enough. And I guess just being likable, I think that's helped quite a bit because there are a lot of people who, if they look a certain way or they get a lot of fame and attention, they literally turn into the biggest douchebag ever. And I, I would say that hasn't happened to me. I've, I've managed to keep myself quite grounded and humble and down to earth. And I think that's largely because of the upbringing I've had 
you know, with, with my family and the friends that I've surrounded myself with. So, yeah. Next question, do you see yourself having kids one day? Yes, of course. Two or three, actually. Not now, though, but uh, in a couple of years' time, when I feel like the timing is right. Although, <laughs> it'll probably happen when the timing isn't right, but who knows. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it'd be life-changing in a very positive way. Uh, I feel like I want to continue the family tree. And I think, I imagine my life without kids, and I just feel like a very big part of the whole life experience would be missing, you know, if I didn't have children to raise kids. Uh, it would be weird. I think it'd be very selfish of me not to have kids as well. So, yeah, for sure. Next question, what was the lowest point in your life? I would probably say when I had left Newcastle. This was in 2016. So I basically walked away from a successful personal training company and studio, which I owned. I was 50-50 with a business partner. I had all my clients there and I had a very good life, uh, a life where I was earning decent money and I had lots of friends and things were going pretty well. But I just knew that Newcastle wasn't the place for me. I was having a lot of problems with my business partner. We, were, we just wanted different things. And I knew that just staying in Newcastle, I'm just not going to develop and progress the way that I want to progress, you know? Uh, so I knew that in order to take that next step, I would have to walk away and start from scratch. And at this point, I remember driving home to Leeds, which is where my family live. I was driving home, driving the Vauxhall Corsa, my car was just full of all my possessions. I just said goodbye to all my closest friends, my clients, and just thought it was a massive step in the opposite direction as to where I'd been going in the previous years. And it, it, was, it was quite scary, particularly because at that point I, I literally just had stopped earning a large percentage of my income because I no longer had any clients to train. And I think I only had one sponsored deal from EHP Labs, which was like $1,000 a month, which was basically keeping me going. But I just had a lot of faith knowing that everything was going to be okay. And it was a, a huge motivator and kick up the arse to do something about it. You know, I think in times of desperation, that is when you really see what you're made of. And that is when you really start to hustle. Like I, I would love to continuously have that mindset and hustle when you're broke and you're just literally trying to establish your career. So that was definitely a very low point. I actually remember I was breaking down into tears on the way back home. Like it, it, was, it was definitely a low point which stood out to me, but seeing where I am now and how I've overcome that and almost gone from being successful to like hitting that rock bottom and then bouncing back from that, it's very... Is powerful and it inspires you me with a lot of confidence knowing that you know if things don't go to plan or hit another low in the years to come which probably I will do uh, I know that I'll be able to bounce back from it and everything's gonna be fine so there we go they're the questions that were asked there was a hell of a lot of other good ones which I didn't get to answer but I'm probably just gonna save them for another video I hope you enjoyed it thank you for asking them and thank you for taking the time to hear me answer them hopefully it's been beneficial in some way so thank you. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give it a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.